Okay, when it comes to love, Jesus and the Gospels. Yeah, when it comes to love, Jesus and the Gospels. Jesus told a story of a uh, of a uh, a father who had two sons, and uh, the youngest son wanted his inheritance. So the father gave him his inheritance, and the son ran off and spent all his money on riotous living. Uh -huh. And as he spent all his money, he found himself homeless. He found himself, as a matter of fact, eating with the swine, which is a strong statement in itself because Jews don't even eat swine. Right. And this young fellow was eating with the swine. Uh -huh. So after he came to himself, Jesus says, this guy says, well, look, my father's servants eat better than me. Yeah. I'm going to go back and ask him to take me on as a servant. Mm -hmm. So he goes back to the father, and the father uh, sees him and, and welcomes him in. And the son is saying, uh, just take me back as a servant. And the father is saying, a servant, are you crazy? I'm paraphrasing, of course, but are you crazy? He put a ring on his son. He uh, told his servants to kill the fattest calf. They threw a party because the son had came back. Yeah. And while the party was going on, the oldest son, the oldest son heard the party going on. So he asked one of the servants what was going on, and the servant told him that his brother was back, and you know, the father threw him a party and things of that nature, uh -huh. and the oldest son got upset. Yeah. And the reason why the oldest son got upset is because the oldest son is like thinking to himself, look, I'm here all the time. I do everything you tell me to do, Dad. And you never threw a party for me. You never did all these great things for me. But what Jesus was telling this story, he was giving us a picture of God's love. This father loved his son even though his son's performance was lousy. Mm -hmm. Because this love wasn't based on his condition. It wasn't based on any type of condition. It wasn't based on his performance. He loved them just because he loved them. Mm -hmm. And in that story, Jesus is trying to tell us that we need to love in that same way. we got to stop loving based on conditions. Agape love, this unconditional love, is a choice that you make. When it comes to the other forms of love, they're based on emotion. You don't actually love that girl. You love the way you feel when that girl comes around. You love those sensations. That's not true love. Because if those sensations stop, then that feeling stop, then you don't feel the same way about that person anymore. Yeah. So these types of love are... Uh, uh, not tr not true love. True love is a choice that one makes. A choice that I'm going to do something and it don't matter if it's my friend or my enemy, I'm going to help them out. That's what agape love is. Hmm. What about as when most of us continue to put on conditionalities on, on our happiness and on our self-acceptance like, wow, I'll really be me when I obtain a certain position or achieve certain results, get a you know a particular job, particular car, or whatever. Well, actually, I believe <clears throat> you should be you first. You should be you first and find your point, your pivotal point in life, so that your true potential can shine, and all the other stuff will come. But these things shouldn't be our focus. We shouldn't focus on the car and things of that nature. Because these things could wither away just like that. Soon you pull a car off the parking lot, the, uh, the showroom, it starts depreciating. Why would you put your whole being of love into something like that when it could go just like that? And when it goes just like that, then your heart is going to drop. And that story is told in the story of Jonah, who put his love in a plant that was here one day and gone the next. And God was trying to show him that this plant is a material thing. You know, and you're putting all your love into it. When it can be gone just like that. It's the same thing with material things. We chase after these material things. We got to have them. Not knowing that when we put our being into them and they're gone, 
we're, I mean, the wiring in us is so disrupted that we can lead, it, it can lead us to suicide. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful what we put our, our, our hearts into, you know. And as for us being the true us, this is what life is about. Be the unique you. You know, don't put on these different coats and, and, and you got on all of these coats where you um, don't even know who you are anymore. Be who you are. Jesus, if Jesus was a family man and an executive and a husband, guess what? He would have been, in the morning time, Jesus at the office. Then, in the afternoon, playing with his children, he would have been Jesus again. And then, at night time, with his wife, he would have been Jesus again. He wouldn't have been all of these different coats, all of these different labels. You understand what I'm saying? He would have carried these labels, but he would have been himself in all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a diagram um, of the human ego drawn. I think it was a book, an Uspensky book. Um, and this diagram was like a circle that was cut up into all kinds of different pieces, sort of like a pie or rather more like a grid. Mm -hmm. And there was an eye in every one of these little boxes of the grid, so that the, the the general ego, the commonplace ego, or sense of self, is split, where uh, where one thing in one moment and in one role, and another thing in another moment or another role. You're saying that regardless of what role we play. Our, our real self is essentially always the same. Well, no, our real self should always be the same. We change roles. I mean, we change roles as we uh, go into these different rooms. We put on a different <coughs> role. We put on a different coat. But the idea is not to put on a different role. The idea is to stay yourself as you enter into these different rooms. Never lose yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the big question is how? First, you got to know who you are. Let's take Christ again. Christ knew who he was. Mm -hmm. You got to search within yourself to find out who you are. And you're not going to find yourself in religion. You have to get out of the box of religion. You have to uh, search within and find out who you are. What you got to know is we are consciousness. We are souls. We are not physical makeup like this body. This is not me. This, that's not you. There's something inside that body that's you. And you were speaking about the ego earlier. The ego is the identity that's created for this world. You are consciousness, and consciousness constructs the identity for this physical world, and you develop a personality within that ego. And the whole purpose of the ego, in the beginning, the reason why a lot of people draw it as a square inside the circle of consciousness is because this square is supposed to eventually, ultimately, become a circle. That's you taking the fingers or the energy that's pointed at you and start pointing it outwards because that's what consciousness is. That's what God consciousness is. So in this reality, God, uh, this consciousness forms this square, which is the ego, and you go through these four <laughs> levels. And remember I was mentioning the fourth level, the highest level, Christianity terms as eternal life. Life eternal. Can we send out a message that uh, if we uh, continue to actually um, believe that this ego is who we are, 
that we're condemning ourselves to misery and be, because the conditions of the physical world that are identifying or defining this ego are always changing and we, we seem to be grasping uh, after uh, shadows and dust and that this ego uh, which um, the Kimanika film uh, worded it so that it has this goal of trying to be uh, greater than the true self but really it's a false uh, sense of identity. Really is it false what? That the ego is a false uh, sense of identity. Yeah, the ego Being is... separate and, and of course and alone, right? And vulnerable. Yeah, well the ego is is set up is set up as a program to create an identity. But at the same time, the identity is supposed to grow to agape. It's supposed to grow to unconditional love. It's supposed to grow to a circle. It's supposed to shed this, this square and become one with consciousness. If you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This is the whole goal in life. This is the whole purpose in life. And if you don't get it right, we come back and try it again. And try it again. Now, in the face of Jesus, this picture is a picture to show that this is how the circle operates. This is what the circle does. So stop being a square. Stop being selfish and start being selfless. We know it's easier said than done because the program is like so embedded in us that this is what life is about. This is where our struggles come from. Once you become conscious, once you become one with the circle, then you start overseeing life for what it really is. Mm -hmm. Then you're able to maneuver through life with the help of the universe, with the help of consciousness. Life is no longer your enemy, but it's your friend. And there are some people that want to stay in the square. They don't want to be conscious. They don't want to be a circle. They want to be greedy. They want to uh, uh, be selfish. But we're not speaking about them. We're speaking about the people that uh, want to do right. They want to be one with God. Mm. And the key is to not be selfish, to be selfless, to follow the moves of Jesus of the gospel because that's what the picture was given for religion could never take you there rules and regulations could never take you there this is true spirituality that was a nice sentence right there I hope that we have that one